Galatians chapter 3, the hearing of faith. From verse 5, the hearing of faith. I want to show you something that will be the trigger for the manifestation of God's power tonight. The Bible says, He therefore, we're reading verse 5, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and walketh miracles among you, he said, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Verse 6 now. It says, even as Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Let's go back to verse 5. Read from Amplified, please. Very profound revelation. While I was studying this, I said, my goodness. This Bible, sometimes you would study it and then it looks like Another layer just comes. The Bible says, Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you. The Bible says, help my screen. Okay. It says, Does he do so by what the Lord demands or because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you have heard? So the Bible tells us that there are two dimensions as far as experiencing the supernatural is concerned. Number one, he calls it the ministry of the Spirit. Go back to KJV, please. The ministry of the Spirit. Number two, he calls it the working of miracles. So he says, he therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and, that means they are not the same, and worketh miracles among you. How does he bring about this possibility? What is the ministry of the Spirit? The quickenings of the Spirit. Every activity of the Spirit upon your heart and upon your mind is called the ministry of the Spirit. Listen very carefully. Even the miraculous is sponsored by the Spirit. But when we talk about the ministry of the Spirit classically, it is a capture of every divine activity of the Spirit upon your heart and upon your mind. Bringing intelligence according to Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 and 2. All of those dimensions of the spirit, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, it is called the ministry of the spirit. Hallelujah. So when you are gathered to experience the supernatural, that the first thing you need to expect is that there will be the ministry or the quickening of the spirit <clears throat> things you did not know before are we together now some limitations in your thinking because you see notice that every time the move of the spirit happens there is always a blend of wisdom and power remember that to the greek christ is revealed as the wisdom of god and then as the power of god not everybody needs healing not everybody needs deliverance but there are many people who are stunted in life because they need a quickening in their understanding. Are we together? There's confusion. There's lack of direction. For many people, they are confused. They don't know what to do. This is the assignment of the ministry of the Spirit. So when he comes and breathes upon your heart, there are people who need conversion. They are dead as far as the things of God is concerned. They are not saved. And only the Holy Spirit can breathe upon the heart of a man akin to resurrection to bring someone from death to life, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I tell you, no amount of oratory and intelligence is enough to make someone willing to leave his old ways and to come to Jesus. No. If that were possible just by human wisdom, the Holy Spirit would not play any role in the salvation of men. Look at the man Saul, who later became Paul. There was nothing he did not hear. When Jesus was on earth, he was alive. Did you know that when James, when Stephen was being stoned, it was right before him, Saul, who later became Paul. He was the one who approved the stoning, the killing, the martyrdom of Stephen. And yet the man who later would become the chiefest of apostles. The spirit of God for you. So the Bible says he that received or walked the ministry of the spirit. And then number two. He says the walking of miracles. The walking of miracles. 
not just the manifestation of miracles, the walking. You combine the spiritual factors that produce a miracle. How does he achieve this? Both the hearing of this, um, I mean the, the ministry of the spirit, the quickening, and then the working of miracles. He says all of this happened by the hearing of faith. Listen carefully. That means the ministry of the spirit tonight and the manifestation of the miracles that we'll soon be celebrating is at the mercy, not of the power of God, but of the hearing of faith. If something is wrong with the hearing of faith, it will affect the ministry of the Spirit. Are we together? And it will affect the manifestation of the power of God. The hearing of faith. I'm reminded in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. The Bible says, while Peter yet spake these things, these words, Watch this now. While Peter yet spake these words, watch the ministry of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost fell, not on all them who were in the room, on all them which had the word. The Holy Ghost did not fall on all them that were in the room. He fell on all them that heard the word because the ministry of the Spirit is connected to the hearing of faith. Are we learning now? What is the hearing of faith? The hearing of faith is the entire process that leads to your believing God, your receiving from Him. It's called the hearing of faith. The entire process that leads to your believing God and then your receiving from Him. I hope we're following now. So we've established that the supernatural is predicated upon the hearing of faith. The ministry of the Spirit and the working of miracles depends on the hearing of faith. And you see, I have a faith series already, so this is just a charge I'm giving us tonight. There are two dimensions to the hearing of faith. Listen carefully. You really want to receive from God tonight. God is not a magician. God is not a superstitious person. There are exact spiritual laws that translate to the miraculous. There are exact spiritual laws that translate to supernatural solutions. And even though the Spirit of God is here present, even though the Word of God is here, you must know how to combine it. Are we together now? Just because I give you the ingredients for a meal does not mean you produce a healthy meal. Everything a chef uses to produce a sumptuous meal is available for every other person. But the secret is in the intelligence to combine it. Are we learning now? Yes. There are two dimensions to the hearing of faith. Number one is called what you hear. The correctness of what you hear. Listen please. You cannot walk in genuine faith until you first vet what you hear. The correctness of what you hear, the information. In Mark chapter 4, 23 and 24, Mark 4, 23 and 24, the Bible says, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. That means not every man has that kind of ear. Then the next verse says, give it to us please, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Is someone in church? Take heed what you hear, not just that you hear. The content, the correctness of the information upon which your faith is built on matters. There are many people who are exhibiting genuine faith but on wrong information. Hallelujah. The woman with the issue of blood always had the ability to be healed but there was an information she needed to bring that miracle the power of god to heal her was always there but her problem was there was something she did not hear are we together now the hearing of faith depends on number one what you hear the correctness of your information let's look at luke chapter 13 please thank you jesus luke 13 We'll read 11, 12, then jump to 16 and 17. Luke 13. The Bible says, and behold, please follow carefully. I'm building your faith now. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. 18 years. How long? 18 years. And the Bible says that woman was bowed or bent together and could in no wise lift up herself. Verse 12. The Bible says, when Jesus saw her, I love Jesus. He called out to him 
and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. 13, uh, or verse 16 now. The, remember when the woman was healed, all of these religious guys came and they began to probe him. Why are you healing her on the Sabbath? And Jesus said something profound. The hearing of faith. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound low these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? Do you know what he's saying? That there was an information if this woman had, even before Jesus got there, she would have been healed. It is true. It was not Jesus who healed everybody in the Bible in the flesh. There were people who were healed even before he was born. Am I right? Even when he ascended to heaven, the apostles still healed. Ought not this woman. Nobody told her she was a daughter of Abraham. Nobody told her she was a partaker of the covenant and the promise. That means it was an anomaly for her being a daughter of Abraham to be in this condition. When Jesus saw her, he said, Ah, madam, you are in this situation even 18 years. Who has been preaching to you in the synagogue? He never told you what God had with Abraham that indeed shall the families of the earth be blessed. They were angry. As soon as he told the woman, he said, Woman, leave that situation. Now, there is something that you should know that should stop you from remaining in that situation. Ought not this woman, the hearing of faith, it is not enough to hear. You must hear the correct information. Listen, let me tell you the truth. And I, I submit, I don't know everything. I'm learning. But when it has to do with this, this business of Miracuba, I know something small about it. Hallelujah. There are certain things that if you are taught, if you really are taught it, at the end of that lecture, even before prayer, you will stand up. This is my business, oh. Are we together now? Most believers do not receive because there is, a, there is an information combination in the spirit that releases the power of God. And most people do not have the opportunity to hear that. It says, be careful what you hear. There are people who have had things that multiply their pain. There are people who have had things that multiply their frustration. And some of this information may come from we men of God, sincere and well-meaning. Just because you are sincere does not make what you are saying correct. Beware of what you hear. Could it be that there was something if you heard before now, you would not be in that situation. And now I'm not just speaking with respect to bodily infirmity alone. It affects every area of your life. We rise in this kingdom by light. It says, arise, shine, for your light is come. If that light does not come, you will stay down. Even if it's 18 years, even if it's 38 years, you will remain there until your light comes. Someone prophesy, say, my light has come. Let the devil hear you say, my light has come. The light that takes away shame, the light that takes away reproach, the light that takes away mediocrity, that light has come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Jesus himself is warning that the hearing of faith that allows for the ministry of the spirit, the hearing of faith, watch this now, that allows for the working of miracles depends on the correctness, the quality of what you hear. The power of God will not come to back a lie. The Spirit of God will not come to back a lie. He is called the Spirit of Truth. Is someone learning? So he says, be careful what you hear. Let me give you a rundown of certain things you need to hear tonight and forever if you want to see the ministry of the Spirit and the power of God. My apologies, I'm not explaining them, I'm just going to list them. There is a faith series already designed for you and I'll take time to deal with this in detail. This year your faith must work. Yeah. This year the devil must know your faith is working. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number one, very quickly. The first information that powers the faith of people as far as the correctness of information is concerned is that number one, God is love. This is very powerful. 
As simple and as frail as that statement sounds, that is the foundation for the believer walking in the miraculous. God is love. First John chapter 4, verse 8 and verse 16. God is love. Say it after me, please. God is love. One more time. The moment you have this awareness that God is love, and I told you while I started preaching that it is in the character of love to give, immediately you know that every time love comes, there is always something to give. This is the basis of your expectation. God will never, never, never come to you and not give something. Mm -mm. God is love. Number two, that Jesus came as an expression of the Father's love to you. Jesus came. The reason why he walked upon the earth, the reason why he died, the reason why he resurrected was to reveal the Father's love to you or for you. Jesus came as an expression of the Father's love for you and the Father's love towards you. John chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, For God so loved Joshua Selman. For God so loved Koinonia. For God so loved your family. For God so loved your ancestry. He knew there was something wrong with your ancestry. That's why he sent Jesus. He knew there was something wrong with your background, your foundation. That's why he sent Jesus. Every time you see Jesus, I want you to see God's love in action. The reason why Jesus came was not just to demonstrate power. He came as an expression of the love of God. That is still the reason why he comes. Anytime he comes, even by his word. When the word of God comes, it comes to reveal the Father's love. Hmm. Are you learning now? Remember, we're discussing what you hear. You can hear something that gives you power. Right now, someone is listening to me. You have some back pain. Someone is listening to me. Maybe you came here with some crutch or you, are, you don't have, you know, the ability to walk. Someone is coming here now. Maybe you are deaf. Maybe you are blind. This is what empowers you. It is not superstition. So this is how much he loves me. Every time the word comes, it is the love of God coming to me. Coming to bring me healing. Someone is seated here right now. All plagued by all kinds of satanic manipulations from your family. They've looked at you and said you are the black sheep of that family. Like Gideon, that your family will never rise. How many businessmen are here already frustrated and disoriented? This is January. And yet they are already afraid. How will February be? My goodness, this is what you get when you come to church. There is something that when you hear fear dies. There is something when you hear faith rises. There is a young man hearing me now. You are wondering, the only person to help me has relocated. Could it be that God allowed him to relocate so that your real helper will come? Are you learning now? So number one, God is love. Number two, Jesus came as an expression of the Father's love for you. Number three, hear this, hear this, hear this. The price for your sin, the price for your healing, the price for your deliverance, the price for freedom from poverty has been fully paid. Underline fully paid. The price has been paid. If I enter a mall with you, and then I look at you and I say, you know what? I want to show you how much I love you. And then I pick a few things and I pay for all of them. Just because I've paid for them does not mean you will have it. You can choose to watch and say, wow, he has paid for them. But the way this officer is eyeing me, do I have the courage to go and carry it? The awareness that the price has been paid for is where the boldness to receive comes from. Are we together? When you have the money to pay for anything, nobody will ask you your age for most things. Nobody will say, where are you coming from? Are you Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba, Northern and South, Southern and... It doesn't matter. The reason why many are afraid to receive salvation, to receive healing, is because they think, because of the manipulations of Satan and darkness, is it really true that the price has been paid? Listen. Unclean spirits, including Satan, are stubborn spirits. They depend on revelation to bow. 
Just because it is finished and it is done does not mean Satan will clear out of the way. He's a stubborn spirit. If Satan were not stubborn, we would not need power. The only thing we would need is wisdom. God left power as proof that these unclean spirits are stubborn. They know the price to be free from this untimely death in your family. They know the price to be free from this going up and down in terms of poverty and failure. They know it's been paid. They know you are a young man that the anointing of the spirit is upon. They know that you are the one destined to rise and wipe the tears of your family. But they will lie to you and use the things that you see and keep you down. But thank God you came for miracle service tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The price for your sin. I don't care what you have done or not done. The price has been paid. I don't care what kind of sickness. Look at the lady. How do you remove, you know, do, did you hear that testimony? I know many of you still didn't believe it. That is your business. The girl has been healed. The person who received it is showing you that this is my evidence. Say amen. amen. It's like someone said, I just made money. And you say, you don't believe it. How does that change the person? <laughs> Some of us are used to the word not working. You always doubt when it works. And yet we say, Lord, I believe you. And God says, okay, let me come through for you. And you cannot even believe. I'm not talking of stage manage, exaggerated testimonies, lies. No, no, no. We are responsible people. As much as possible, we will not come and testify things here that did not happen. There is no pressure whatsoever. Are we together now? It's, it's an unnecessary burden. But if it happens and it will give God glory, we will not keep quiet. The price has been paid. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. Let's hurry up. Colossians 12, 1 to 14, please. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us, watch this now, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13, now, the Bible says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness. Someone hear this, hear this. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 14 now, in whom we have redemption. How? Through his blood. That is the price, the blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians chapter 2, 13 to 15. Let's hurry up. These are the things you need to hear. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses how many all. then blotting out the handwriting of ordinances you know what the handwritings are in joshua selman's family let no one rise because of where he comes from if people are about to rise let them die these things are ordinances they are not statements they were not written with pen and paper they were written with blood and sacrifices whether in ignorance or in idol worship they are called ordinances but the bible says there is a master cleaner that can wipe this away blotting out listen if you don't believe this you will not have the confidence to receive. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. The writing was not for your favor. What was there, I don't know what it is, but I know it was to destroy me. Which was contrary to us. What is contrary? Against, opposing. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up.
hear me? The price for your healing tonight, fully paid. Hear me? In our economy, we allow for part payment. And sometimes the owner gets angry and says, you have paid, but you didn't pay all. If your rent is 1.2 million, you can pay 400,000 and say, please give me some time. The man can say, okay, depending on his own state, if life presses him, he can come back and say, I changed my mind. That's why he paid fully. Fully means not owing anything again. So that which was supposed to keep me down, ordinarily it was supposed to keep me down, except that someone came in my stead and paid that price. Notice, the next thing in the Bible that followed paying the price is an advocacy for a lie. The moment Jesus resurrected, the next plan was cover this up. Let people not know. That is always what happens. The next thing, when Satan knows that this is a reality, the next thing becomes to cover it up so that you will never find out that because my father died an idol worshiper and buried all kinds of people and I came from that lineage, it doesn't have to be that way. The price has been paid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Price has been paid. How was the price paid? By a righteous man being unrighteous so that unrighteous people might be righteous. Paid. The next thing you have any devilish dream and you see some other people calling you, tell them you are calling the wrong person. No, no. Update your data in the spirit. You are calling the wrong person. No, you are calling the wrong person. Calling you to come and do what and die? Calling you to have the cancer? Calling you to have the... No, you are calling the wrong person. Listen, don't just... This is a miracle service already. This is the ministry of the spirit. Something is happening to you. Just because you cannot speak English. Who said you cannot rise? Just because you left a, a house where the roof is leaking to come here. Who told you that must be your destiny? Nobody ever rises until you are mindful of what you hear. God is love. What you hear. Jesus came as an expression of the love of God. What you hear. He came to demonstrate the love of God. Is someone learning now? Many of us have been hearing a lot of things and it has destroyed our potential. The price for all that you will be receiving tonight is fully paid. Last year we had our workers dinner and I watched as my precious people came gallantly and sat down and ate with joy and confidence everything that was before them. Some did not spare at all. They had no time for any, any composure that leads to regrets later on. They ate whatever they had in front of them. Say fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. Fully paid. The price for your rising, fully paid. Now, listen, you will be wondering why it's been fully paid. And yet, it is not yet your inheritance. This is my assignment to show you. But whether or not you have experienced the dimensions of God you need, the first thing is to accept that it is fully paid. Fully paid. Longevity, fully paid. Prosperity. Say that one again. Prosperity. Your health and your life. Entering into your prophetic destiny. The price for that mantle to rest on your life. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. If you like, show me the photos of my forefathers holding arrows and burying whatever. Congratulations for connecting me to history. But from the realm of the spirit, you are talking to the wrong person. Honestly, this is what I believe. Fully paid. 
Somebody, that, that's your revelation in Koinonia this night. Fully paid, fully paid, fully paid. The devil can go places it is fully paid. Fully paid. Sit down, please. Do you know why this is powerful? Because you will see people receiving things tonight that they don't look like. It was not them that paid it. Someone paid it for them. Listen. If you think you are so poor and you are so weak and I decide to pay for a five bedroom flat with a three bedroom BQ, you will even be afraid as you are entering it. But it is still paid. You will adjust when you are inside. You can't adjust outside. The adjustment happens inside. It's a miracle service, so it's still a miracle service. Number four, let's hurry up. What is the fourth revelation you must have? It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not give God glory. This is an uncomfortable truth, but you must accept it. It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not glorify God. This awareness is what will plant a dissatisfaction in you that even if it is after one year, I will fight the fight of faith. You cannot fight until you are aware that that current situation is not the will of God. If it is the will of God, then that means you are fighting God. If you think sickness is the will of God, you are fighting the will of God trying to get healed. If you think poverty is the will of God, you are fighting the will of God. The awareness of the will of God is what gives you the confidence to know what to fight and to know what to allow. It is not the will of God for you to remain in any situation that does not glorify God. Matthew chapter 8, 1 to 3. My goodness, let's hurry up. Matthew chapter 8. Watch this. When he was come down from the mountain, the Bible says, a great multitude followed him, verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, give us amplified, in fact. Amplified, thank you. Behold, a leper came to him, prostrating himself. He worshipped him and said, Lord, if you are willing, I don't know whether this is your will, you are able to cleanse me from by curing me verse 3 read it as loud as you can my god i sense the power of god already and he reached out and touched him saying i am willing one more time i am willing one more time as a result be cleansed i am willing prosper i am willing rise i am willing be great you need to know what the will of God is. This is one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit. Man of God, it is the will of God for you to excel in ministry. It's not the will of God for you to be small. Souls cannot be saved when you are small. Don't mind ignorant people. It is God's will for you to rise, to contend for strategic kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty. It is the will of God for you to be anointed in ever increasing dimensions so you can do more for Jesus. It is the will of God for you to prosper so you can give in conferences like this without it affecting you and without you frowning. The will of God. That means everything that is not the will of God tonight, let that become your prayer request. Let that become your, your point of annoyance. You are a man of God and you came here and it looks like you love God sincerely, but ministry is not working. Don't sit down wondering, is it the will of God to lift me? Now you know what to pray for when it's time to pray. Lord, the anointing that brings consolation to men in ministry, that that grace will locate me indeed. <laughs> mm. let me give you one more everything that does not glorify God is not the will of God 
And then the final thoughts that I will give you, can you imagine we're just dissecting what you hear? God is glorified when the word is made manifest in your life. God is glorified. You are not the only one who is happy. It is in God's interest that the word works for you. God is glorified when the word is made manifest in your life. Matthew chapter 9, 6 to 8. Let's hurry up. Matthew 9, 6 to 8. But that ye may know, this is the healing of the paralytic. Remember, they brought a man who had palsy. He was paralyzed. And they asked Jesus to heal him. And Jesus said, your sins be forgiven you. And he, they called him blasphemous. And he now said, which is easier? But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said unto the sick of palsy, Arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Next verse, please. And he arose and departed to his house. Verse 8. <laughs> and when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. There are men that have such power. Did you hear what I said? Not everyone. But there are men that God gave such power. What kind of power? The power to heal. The power to silence your yesterday. Did you hear what I'm saying? There are men. And as I'm saying it now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. As one by grace who has been given such power. It's God that gives men such power. That everything that has mocked God in your life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, let it die permanently this night. Give us that scripture. But the multitude saw it. If it is God, men must see it. Are we together? It is your training that is in secret. When God begins to display his hand upon your life, the multitude saw it like you will be seen shortly. And the Bible says they marveled. But you see, this is the difference between the promotion of flesh and the glorification of Jesus. When men marvel and the credit goes to the man of God, then something is wrong. Anything that is sponsored by the Spirit of God must directly glorify the Christ. They marveled and they glorified God, which had given such power. I found this scripture and I said, my God, he never said had given power. There is something called such power. Signature results that only come with certain dimensions of impartation. Such power. Given such power that you can tell somebody by this week, may God lift you. There is a grace. Listen, if you don't have it, humble yourself and find out how to receive it. But don't say because I don't have it, it's not there. There are people who were given such power. For everyone who has attended this miracle service, I'm prophesying to you, in the name of Jesus, before this week is over, may my God, by the administration of such power, surprise you in a way that will bring tears from your eyes. Surprise you in a way that will bring tears to your eyes. If God can replace a fallopian tube that has been removed, medically proven, may my God replace everything that has been lost in your life. Do you believe this? So the hearing of faith, it says, beware of what you hear. Sit down. Let me wrap up. Then we begin to minister. Hallelujah. The next dimension to the hearing of faith is found in Luke 8.18. Give us amplified. Luke 8.18. He now says, be careful how you hear. This is the second dimension to the hearing of faith. The first talks about the correctness of the information. But the second talks about your attitude while you receive. 
don't just be careful about what you hear you must be careful how you hear it for to him who has spiritual knowledge more will be given and to him who does not have spiritual knowledge even that which he thinks and guesses and supposes that he has will be taken away from him hallelujah so the first talks about the correctness of the spiritual information upon which your faith is built but the second talks about your attitude teachability the swiftness to obey trembling at the word of god not bringing all kinds of um, arguments around the word of god and rendering it of non-effect through your traditions hebrews chapter 4 i'm reminded from verse 1 and 2 the bible says let us therefore fear less a promise being left us of entering into his rest the promise is for us but we can miss it out that any of you should come short of it verse 2 it says for unto us was the gospel preached ladies and gentlemen hear this as well as unto them so there are two groups of people us and them but the word preached did not profit them why not be mixed with faith in them that heard it so their problem was not hearing they had the truth but they did not mind the attitude they doubted oh is it true that God can do this I know this is true but can God turn my life around can I really be a, a Deborah can God pick me from this lowly estate with all my limitations there are two cautions in scripture number one what you hear number two how you hear James chapter 1 22 and 25 be ye doers of the word be ye doers of the word and not hearers only it starts with hearing but performance is not just about hearing it says if you hear only you are deceiving your own self next verse please it says but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work he said this man shall be blessed in how many all his deeds all his deeds say i'm a doer lay your hands on your head and prophesy say i'm a doer i'm a doer the grace to do is released upon me in the name of jesus i wrote something here and i want you to listen only those who obediently act on the word get results from it only those who obediently act on the word get results from it only those who obediently act on the word get results from it he that ministered to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you did he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith that means if you want to work miracles the first raw material is to bring the correct information by the spirit serve it to god's people with excellence then the next thing cultivate an attitude of faith within them you see this is what the bible calls the sent word psalm 107 and verse 20. he sent forth his word and healed them not he spake his word the sent word and delivered them from their destructions hear me koinonia the word that is about to come that will produce the supernatural miracle right now is a sent word and there are three ways to access the sent word can i give you that before we pray number one light from scripture the first way believers access the sent word is light from scripture light from scripture right for reference Luke chapter 4 from verse 17 to 21 Jesus was in the temple and it was delivered to him the book and he found there where it was written and verse 21 says when he looked at them their faces were fastened on him and he said this day is this scripture that was written fulfilled 
in your ears. Light from scripture. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do, to do thy will. It is written already. Light from scripture. You can find from scripture what God has said. And that becomes a sent word. Number two, sent words come as prophetic instructions directly from God or through his anointed vessels. This is the second way we access the sent word. Number one, light from scripture. Number two, instructions directly from God by his spirit or from his anointed vessels. John chapter 5, 6 to 9, we see the power of the sent word as instructions. When Jesus saw him lie, him being the man who had been at Bethesda for 38 years and knew that he had now been a long time, he said to him, will thou be made whole? Next verse, please. The impotent man said, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Verse 8, Jesus said to him, if you believe, rise up, take your bed. Correct information. He heard well. Now what was going to be his response to the sent word? The Bible says immediately. At the instance of the word, the man was made whole. Whether he knew he was made whole or not was a different thing. But the Bible says he was made whole. And he proved that he believed he was whole by taking up his bed and he walked. And that same day was the Sabbath. So a word can come in the name of Jesus Christ. If you've not walked, stand up and walk. You can sit down there and perhaps not get a miracle. But somebody will take a step of faith check your body do when prophetic instructions come they are not just some gimmicks and mechanics from men of god it is by the spirit it is a sent word sometimes it can be to shout sometimes it can be to lay your hands can be to keep quiet under an atmosphere of the spirit you must believe and respect the sent word that comes as prophetic instructions number three how does the sent word come by prophetic declarations these ones are not instructions they are speakings Ezekiel 37 7 I prophesied as I was commanded he did not instruct the bones he prophesied and there was a noise and behold a shaking and bones came together bone to his bone I prophesied as I was commanded Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 2 and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me let me recap again that when it has to do with the administration of the sent word there are three biblical ways the sent word that brings healing that brings deliverance that brings lifting comes to believers number one light from scripture number two prophetic instructions if it be thou bid me come and he said come he never said peter come he said come whoever acted on that instruction would have been the beneficiary of that word and then number three prophetic declarations i always wondered why our fathers of faith would spend almost half of their preaching time speaking and making declarations that literally sometimes these fathers can go for ministrations and not even preach so much they just tell you that they came to speak and prophesy and sometimes naive and ignorant people say what is all this one now and then they keep praying may God bless you may God open doors and people are shouting amen and usually you will see someone very proud and careless with no results wondering okay will this work and you will see somebody with their hearts opened an attitude that compels the spirit of glory to rest on them days hours weeks years later people return with strange testimonies all these three you are going to receive you have already received light from scripture the next is going to be the prophetic instruction backed up with prophetic declarations there is no reason why the sent word should not work in your life are you ready to receive rise up please And it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are in here 
all the overflows outside it does not matter let your heart be ready and open and for a global family following from across the globe I want you to believe that everything you have heard is truth according to God's Word go ahead and pray now I receive your sent word I receive your sent word I receive your sent word someone is praying I receive your sent word. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive. I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord. Breathe, 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 breathe